Okay, let me tell you about one more mental shortcut, or cognitive bias. To begin with, here is a question for you. Which do you think is a more common cause of death? Fall from a building? Or fall from a bed? What a stupid question, you might say. Of course fall from a building is more common. And that would be a wrong answer. According to the official statistics, from the U.S., provided by the Center for Disease Control and Prevention, as of the year 2016, there are approximately 10,000 deaths, due to falls, involving bed, per year. That is 2,000 deaths more, than those from fall from, out of, or through building or structure. One more question. Do you think that in the English vocabulary, there are more words that start with letter K, or there are more words that contain letter K, in the middle? Hard to say, of course. But most of people will feel inclined to say more words that start, with K and that is wrong again. There are almost three times more words that contain letter K in the middle, than those, that start with a K. Surprising. Isn't it? So. These are two situations in which you were asked to make a guess regarding something that you didn't know, and never even thought of before. Very likely, you, like the majority of people, at least felt inclined to make a wrong guess. Why is that? What is in common in these two situations? Let's take a look. In case of the death causes. How often do you hear about people falling or jumping off buildings and dying? Not so rarely. It happens. When was the last time that you've read news of this kind? Perhaps a few days ago. And how about news figuring somebody falling off a bed? Perhaps, never. They don't make news out of such stories. But if there's no media coverage, it doesn't mean that it doesn't happen. In case of the words that contain letter K how many words that start with letter K can you name of the top of your head? I bet, a lot. And can you name at least three words that contain a letter K in the middle in 10 seconds? Hardly. In this two little experiments, your answers were influenced by how easily you could recall something, or how easily you could imagine certain scenario. We call this mental ease. Or the ease of retrieval. This mental ease, with which an instance of a situation, or a mental image of a situation, comes to your mind, determines your perception of probability, or importance of this situation. In other words, things that you can recall, or give examples of, or easily imagine, are unconsciously, perceived as more probable, and more important too. And this unconscious mental shortcut often leads us into an error. That's why we call it availability bias. Availability, means that an association is readily available in your memory, and is easily retrievable. The formal definition of availability bias, or availability heuristic, as it appears on Wikipedia, is the following. A mental shortcut, that relies on immediate examples, that come to a given person's mind, when evaluating a specific topic, concept, method, or decision. We have already clarified the psychological mechanism behind this bias. Availability bias is due to the mental ease of retrieval. But why is the most easily retrieved information, such as examples, or mental pictures, are often not representative of the real world? Well, because there is always a discrepancy between the objective world outside and the pictures in people's heads. Think about how media influence the picture in your head. For example, media only cover newsworthy events. Local news might cover a case of a suicider who jumped of a building, but not a case of an old person who fell of a bed and died. Besides, media cover events that are in conformance with their editorial policies, such as political views. Media talk about relevant things, that concern the majority of their audience, not the minority. Besides media, there is also real-life personal experience too. For example, if you have attended a charity fundraising event recently, you are more aware of specific social problems, whereas for somebody who hasn't attended the event, these same problems, that objectively exist, are not, that, real. So, here is the bottom line. Exposure to specific concepts, whether objectively experienced, or virtually experienced, determine how easily retrievable from memory these concepts are. Concepts are more easily retrievable if the exposure is recent. For example, think how your perception of a plane crush risk changes, right after you watched news about such a case. The exposure is frequent. For example, if you work for a social service helping homeless people, you can easily and quickly name 10 different reasons why people become homeless. If you don't work for such social service, you may, imagine 10 different reasons why people become homeless, but it would take you a while. The experience is vivid. 
For example, if you attended a charity fundraising event that made a strong emotional impact on you. Maybe an emotional speech or video made you cry. Then, the issues raised at the event will appear more common and more important to you. In general, emotional and surprising events tend to have stronger vividness effect, and therefore stay easily retrievable from our memory, for a long time, sometimes, forever. That's all for now about the availability bias. You may now take a little quiz on this part. If you feel a little confused about the two biases that we have learned so far, the priming bias, and the availability bias, if they seem too similar to each other, and if you want to understand better what exactly is the difference between the two, please watch a short optional video just below this video.